There are also staff pressures. Now, I know in the room we have a mixture, a mixture of those of you in partnership roles and uh, those of you who are in would-be partner roles. But there's no question that the major international firms, whether in New York or London or elsewhere, um, have very little choice but to be seen to be uh, credible uh, corporate responsibility uh, disciples. They need it for recruitment uh, purposes. I was habitually assailed at Clifford Chance by partners who would say, look, this is just getting totally tedious, you know, yet another university visit at which the students want to talk about nothing except the opportunities to do human rights and uh, pro bono work. And that's because they take the glitz and the gloss and the prestige and the big money and the uh, ability to do major M&A transactions and all other forms of cutting edge work as a given. The differentiator which may uh, make them elect to join your firm is the fact that you may have a more sustainable pro bono culture. This is a decision that's determining which of the international law firms many youngsters will now join. And in order to retain them, you need to be exhibiting a visible commitment in this area. That's why <coughs> If you go to one of these firms, you're likely, if you want it, to be able to avail yourself of a, uh, a secondment to um, uh, an NGO, um, where not only do you have an opportunity to do the kind of work that you can talk about at, in the pub in the evening or, or, or at a dinner party, but you're likely to get enormous skills training because uh, the lawyers of the 21st century don't have the advantage which someone of my vintage uh, had, which was raw street lawyering experience. Uh, when I uh, started off, I was able to do all the rice um, uh stuff um, of um, uh, which um, John Grisham uh, is uh, allegedly familiar, uh, but <laughs> very difficult to provide those kind of opportunities in these big uh, corporate law firms these days and uh, you know I pitch this carefully because there is an argument that corporate lawyers let loose their youngsters on pro bono work in order to enable them to make mistakes for people who don't really count but it's unquestionably the case that in an environment where the cases have got bigger the transactions have got more substantial um, uh, a public interest law provides a terrific opportunity for uh, lawyers of any age in the modern era to get terrific uh, street level um, uh, training. And then there's the obvious reputational risk. Mm -hmm. If a major firm these days were to make it clear or were to be seen empirically not to be um, a credible stalwart in the public interest uh, field, uh, that firm would be flayed by a very competitive legal trade media that exists in London and uh, that media is always very interested in what happens uh, in this jurisdiction. That's why they have biannual Irish um, uh, supplements. They're very keen to follow what's happening in uh, Dublin. And uh, uh, for that defensive reason also, it's uh, it's really no longer a choice but to be seen to be engaged in, um, in, uh, uh, in this area. As to my own little journey uh, in this, I started off by doing death penalty work. I'm not a criminal lawyer. It's an exotic um, imperial hangover in the UK that um, Caribbean death row cases still end up in the Privy Council in London. And the group who used to be called the Law Lords, uh, the Supreme Court sitting as judges of the Privy Council, will still hear dozens of cases a year from Belize and Trinidad and Jamaica and, um, uh, and elsewhere. And death penalty cases pose particular burdens. As Lord Goff, one of the, the greatest English judges, said, those cases are uniquely uh, irreversible. And um, I know all about that because I acted for a man who, whose point before the Privy Council was whether the prerogative of mercy is justiciable. 
when you've been to the privy and lost, and when you're petitioning the governor of Trinidad, as he was, uh, for your life, and you fail, uh, is that it? And the Privy Council, in that case, by three to two, said that that was it, and as a result of the case that I lost, uh, a life was lost. Um, three years later, we litigated the same point for a different client, and on that occasion, I'm, uh, you can imagine my mixed feelings when the Privy Council said that their decision in the earlier case was wrong. Uh, and uh, my pals who are constitutional lawyers in universities tell me that for all the commercial success I may have had at um, Clifford Chance, it was those two um, decisions in uh, two death penalty pro bono cases uh, which were um, the biggest academic footnotes in my career. So this work is not uh, unimportant. I'll happily deal uh, over um, the questions and answers with any um, uh, particular queries you have about how um, a pro bono practice develops in, um, uh, in a major uh, law firm. But uh, at the end of the day, although I have perhaps led on the uh, commercial and other drivers behind this work in the modern era, of course there's an unimpeachable moral underpinning to all of this. This is, I profoundly believe, what lawyers do. This is in an increasingly homogenized world, uh, a world in which many people come into the profession, perhaps for the first time, because of the riches it can uh, afford, uh, which hasn't traditionally been a consideration. This is one of those few irreducible features which I think forcibly reminds us as to why we became uh, lawyers in the um, first place. The legal profession still has a good story to tell in that regard. It's always done free legal work. I think the only difference now is that the tools exist instrumentally to do it in a much more efficient and scalable way, and that's where FLAC and PILA come in. The reason I think why I'm here today is because I met the delightful Joe Kenny of PILA at a European pro bono conference in Paris last year. The idea of a European conference on pro bono, itself inconceivable five years ago, and the work being done by Irish NGOs was uh, familiar to many people across the continent and should be a source of great pride uh, to you all uh, in the room. So thanks to them and to the Law Society for conceiving of this event and happy to deal with any questions later.